We welcome you to worship today. And as we do so, we acknowledge that Calvary United Church stands on Treaty 6 territory. We pay our respects to our elders, both past and present, wherever we find ourselves this morning. We recommit to our status as an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada and strive to be an open-minded, inclusive, and welcoming place of worship. It is our deepest hope that all people might feel at home in this space, and we give thanks to God for this Sabbath day where we join our hearts and minds in prayer. First the word, then the singing. First the flame, then the warmth. First the singing, then the joy. First the warmth then the light. This fourth Sunday of Advent always feels different from the others. Like the air is heavy with anticipation, as if Christmas were so close we could taste it. Even this year when everything is so unusual, we pause here, we light our candles, and we rejoice for we know that God's love is all around us. With our candle of love burning today, we promise to take the love that we find here out into the world and spread it as far as we can. For even in the midst of these dark days, God's light shines upon us.
morning and welcome to Children's Time. How are you all doing today? I, myself, am feeling much more in the Christmas spirit after that wonderful Christmas pageant that you all put together for us last week. Thank you for your such hard work and reminding us grown-ups what Christmas is really all about. This week, our theme is Don't Be Afraid to Choose Love. Oh, hey there, Star. How are you doing this morning? Hi, Sam. I'm good, thank you. That's great. Star... Why are you wearing a mask today? Because I'm choosing love. Oh yeah, I was just telling everybody that's our theme for today. But how is wearing a mask choosing love, Star? Isn't that just a rule we have to follow right now? I thought l choosing love and love looked more like giving your parents a hug or not stealing the last chip from your brother or sister. Those things are love, Sam. But there are lots of other ways we need to send out love right now. Like what, Star? You know, like locally shopping online, sending mail, being in a Zoom meeting, greeting at a window, sending a thinking of you drawing, or even washing your hands. Oh, those are all things that we can do to keep each other safe and healthy during COVID-19. Are you telling me that th those things are ways of showing love too? You got it, Sam. When we all pitch in and wear our masks and wash our hands, do virtual school or meetings, shop locally online, we're all showing our friends and neighbors love. We can also send our love through drawing pictures and sending mail, meeting in socially distanced ways. These are all things that we can do to act out our love for everyone and remind those that are most special to us that we're thinking of them and holding them inside of our hearts. This pandemic and all the rules are a bit scary and it can be hard to follow them and remember why we have to do these things that we're told we'll have to do. Even when it gets tough to remember what we're doing and why we're doing it, it's to show love. We just have to remember that it's all to show each other love. Well, Star, thank you for helping us remember to choose love today. You're welcome, Sam. And remember, everyone, you can go get your coloring page on our website or Facebook page. Great, Star. Thank you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your abundant love. Thank you for the countless ways we get to choose and show it to those all around us. Help us in moments where choosing love is difficult, especially when all we want to do is just be together for Christmas. Hold those that are lonely and let them feel our love surround them, even when we can't be together. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Hear what the scriptures are saying to the church. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of each and every heart be acceptable unto you, O God, our Creator and Redeemer. Amen. There are times in life, I think, when everything becomes kind of dull, gray, without color. The routine of our days, be they filled with the busyness of pre-pandemic life when we were running all over the place, doing all sorts of things with all sorts of people, or the chaos of interpandemic living, where we try and work full time while supporting our kids and their teachers and homeschooling, adjusting our traditions and plans and reaching out to our loved ones via technology, which sometimes works, but often doesn't. When everything fades, where we become numb or disillusioned or just plain fed up. The term I've heard recently and have used myself incessantly the last few days is COVID fatigue or COVID fog. 
where our brains don't work quite as well as they did nine months ago. Maybe we can't focus or we're short-tempered. It took me 45 seconds the other morning to remember what the toaster was called. It's worrisome. In our house, we've started calling it staring at the wall. That moment when we've just got nothing left. We're tired but can't sleep. We're running behind but have no energy to catch up. We're overwhelmed but can't stop scrolling the news app looking at the latest COVID news or Trump or India. So we just freeze up and stare at the wall. It's not a great place to be, I admit, and maybe I'm the only one who's experiencing it, which would make this homily a tad embarrassing, not to mention incredibly self-serving. But if you do know what I'm talking about, if you know what it's like to feel dull, overwhelmed with the chaos of living, and at the same time underwhelmed by the meaning of it all, then I wonder if you'd like to hear a story this morning about a group of people who are feeling the same way. They were a rather dodgy lot, these people. Not high society, if you know what I mean. They'd prefer to gather at the local speakeasy than the king's palace, for example. Bathing wasn't something they took seriously, but moonshine was. They spent most nights outside, sleeping under the stars. Which, admittedly, sounds pretty exciting, but it wasn't really. It was their job to spend the nights outside. And it was far from comfortable or romantic. It was cold and lonely. And though it could be dangerous now and then, it was mostly boring. For as beautiful as the stars were, they'd become familiar, consistent, unchanging. Nothing new ever happened with the stars. The sky, like their life, was the same, night after night. Sitting there, Counting their sheep, things had become dull. But then, one night, something happened. The stars shifted, and an angel appeared. Now, you must know these folk, they weren't cowards. They were rough around the edges, hardcore tough guys. Some had seen better days, for sure, but... Fear wasn't something they were used to feeling, invoking fear in others, now that they enjoyed. But when those stars moved and the angel's glory shone all around them, they were terrified. Not knowing what else to do, they all dropped to the ground, cowering with their faces in the dirt. Until they heard the angelic words that would end up lingering for centuries. Do not be afraid, the angel said. I bring good news of great joy. For unto you was born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the King. Then, before their minds could wrap around what had been said, they reeled as again the stars moved, making room for a great multitude of heavenly hosts, all singing, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. Then as quickly as they'd appeared, they were gone again. As the stars fell back into their familiar places, the shepherds got up from the ground, dusted themselves off, and looked at each other with expressions stuck somewhere between shock and terror. Confirming that they'd all in fact seen the same thing, they realized they had a decision to make. Would they go back to tending their sheep? Or would they leave their sheep and head to the city of David? They hesitated for only a moment before they chose to go with haste to find the child the angel spoke of. In doing so, they left their dull gray lives on the, mount, on the hillside, and turning towards Bethlehem, they opened themselves to the light and color they hadn't even realized they'd been missing. In the end, it would turn out to be a decision they would never regret. For what they found that night changed how they looked at themselves and the world forever. What they found was love. And we don't have to look too closely to see just how much love this story holds. 
not a spontaneous, easy kind of love that we feel when our hearts are full and life is good, but love that involves deliberate and often difficult choices when life isn't necessarily easy. It's the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, who in the face of ridicule and disappointment chose to hold on to hope even when it seemed a fool's wish. It's the story of Mary, carrying a child she didn't plan for, who, when approached by an angel, chose to say yes to God, even though the risk was so great. It's the story of Joseph, betrothed to a woman pregnant with a child under mysterious circumstances, who thought about divorcing her, but in the end, chose to say yes to her, and to God, no matter how it looked. It's the story of shepherds, strong, brave, unyielding, who found themselves uncharacteristically terrified, but who chose to let the angel's song be louder than their fear and went to search for good news in an unexpected place. When you think about it, There's so much that could have gone wrong. There were so many times that someone could have said no, could have allowed their disappointment, doubt, fear to take over, allow the dull numbness to control their hearts and direct their actions. But they didn't. At every turn, each person in this story said yes. Each one chose love over fear. Erica Marksbury wrote, your presence here and mine, our making it to this day, is a testimony to the love that has been chosen for us, poured into our lives. We are each a collection of all the love people have chosen for us all along this journey. Coursing through our veins is the same courage that inspired each of their choices each time and every way that we choose love for ourselves and one another, we honor that inheritance. There sure is a lot of fear in our lives right now. Many of you have shared with me these past few months the fears your hearts hold. I'm afraid too sometimes. Not least of of all about the fact that I can't remember what the toaster is called. But what I'm afraid of most right now is that we will allow the numbness to take over, to control our hearts and direct our actions. My hope is that instead of choosing fear, we will choose love. We will choose to search the heavens for signs of angels, to open our ears to the good news they herald, to allow the love the Christ child brings to change how we look at ourselves and the world. After all, Jesus Christ was born on on an unremarkable day to an unremarkable couple in an unremarkable village because God chose love. God chose to send pure love to us. And centuries later, the decisions of those who chose to help that love along echoes in miraculous ways nudging each of us to do the same, to share God's love in a world that so desperately needs it. The best part of this story, I think, is when the shepherds leave the stable. They return to their fields, but while the sheep and stars remain familiar, unchanged, the shepherds themselves are no longer the same. The world around them is no longer dull for they left all their fear and trepidation in that stable and ran back to their sheep rejoicing and glorifying God, filled to overflowing with a love that would never end. But of course, that part of the story is for another night. For now, may it be enough to walk the road towards Bethlehem. For now, may it be enough to say, do not be afraid, people of God. Do not be afraid to choose love. Amen. Let us pray. 
Loving God, as we approach the day of Christ's birth, help us to throw wide the doors of our hearts in preparation and choose love. Help us to sense the importance of what happened so long ago when Zechariah, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds were visited by angels to remember the words, do not be afraid, and to celebrate all the promises that you made through them. Help us to take firm hold of the meaning of all these things and to know in the depths of our being that even now you are seeking to work in us and through us to fulfill the promises you have made. As we enter a Christmas season that is unlike others we have experienced, be with us in our isolation and our longing to be with those we love. May this be a time of healing for those who are sick and a time of catching up and reprieve for hospitals and healthcare workers. May we find new ways to share our love with others and to experience the hope and joy of Christmas anew. We pray, O oh God, for those in need around us, for those who need a new start, for those who need a healing word, for those who seek forgiveness. We pray too, O oh God, for the children of our world, and all those of tender faith, all those who have no home to call their home, and all those who are hungry and thirsty. Bless, we pray, the innocent of the earth and all those who trust in you. Bless the humble and the powerless and bring down from their thrones those who are full of pride and those who are indifferent. We hold out to you, O oh God, the prayers that we carry on our hearts. Lift from us our anxieties and our worries about those we love, particularly the ones we name silently or aloud to you now. We ask these things, O oh God, with hope and praise in our hearts, our minds, and our souls, through the one for whom we wait, Christ Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray using these words, Our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
as we leave this place of worship, may the eternal truth be always ours in our heart. That God, who breathed this world into a being, placed the stars into heaven, designed a butterfly's wing, is the God who entrusted Jesus to the care of ordinary people. The God who became vulnerable, that we might know how strong the wonder of love is, a mystery so deep, it's almost impossible to grasp. A mystery so beautiful, it's impossible to ignore. Go in peace, my friends. Go in love. Thank you.